السلام عليكم بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا آمين Okay, continuing with our great book, the book Hasnul Muslim, we come to now with the author he's going to speak about a dhikr, a dua that is said once coming up from the ruku, and it's a very comprehensive dhikr, a very com comprehensive dua with so many wonderful meanings, inshallah, which I hope that we can touch upon by Allah's permission, inshallah, and His bounty. طيب, the hadith is reported by Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu anhu, qal. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا رفع رأسه من الرقوع قال that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he would raise his head from the ruku he would say ربنا لك الحمد and we took this before in the previous session what this means the new part is ملء السماوات والأرض وملء ما بين وملء ملء السماوات والأرض وملء ما شئت من شيء بعد أهل الثناء والمجد حق ما قال العبد وكلنا لك العبد اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد So this is the dua that we're going to take inshallah First and foremost let's look at the wordings of the dua شرح مفردات الحديث قوله ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وما بينهما أي So ملء السماوات وملء الأرض وما بينهما Literally we can translate this simply as being that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the extent of everything which is in existence in the heavens وملء الأرض and to the extent of everything which is existence in the earth وما بينهما and that which is between them both أي أن الله سبحانه وتعالى محمود على كل مخلوق يخلقه that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praised for every creation that he has created in the heavens and in the earth and in between them. وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ فَعْلٍ يَفْعَلُهُ وَمَعْلُومٌ أَنَّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِمَا فِيهِمَا كُلُّهَا مِنْ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ And it's known that everything that is in the heavens and the earth is from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَيَكُونُ الْحَمْدِ حِينَ إِذِنْ مَا لِأَنْ لِسَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ so the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is completely encompassing all of this when we understand it to be in this way as mentioned by Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala in Sharh al mumtah So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most deserving of praise and He's praise for every creation that He creates and He's praise for every action that He does and all, and all the beautiful things in the creation and they are in their trillions in fact beyond that there's probably not a number to encompass all of the creations of Allah Azza wa Jal in the heavens and in the earth and between them both. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is praised and is due to be praised and worthy of praise in the most extensive of manners, in the most extensive of ways. قَوْلُهُمْ وَمِلْءُ مَا شِئْتَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ بَعْدُهُ And also the statement in the dua where we say and Allah is praised to the extent of anything that He wishes to be thereafter. Meaning that after and above and beyond the creation of the heavens and the earth and between them, that's all we know. But anything which could be or may be beyond that, Allah is also praised for that. أي حمدا يملأ ما يخلقه الله تعالى بعد ذلك وما يشاء ومعنى أن حمد الله ملأ كل موجود وملأ ما سيوجد. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa taala for everything in the heavens and in the creation and between. And if there was a case that Allah has created something beyond that, there may be, we don't know, then Allah is also praised for that. And anything that Allah could possibly say, could possibly create and will possibly create, Allah is praised for all of that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the believer, he or she says, Ahlul Thana'i wal Majd. Ahlul Thana'i wal Majd, that Allah is deserving and He is encompassing and He is embodying Thana and Majd. Thana is praise. And majd we'll explain in a moment. So thana huwa al-madhu bi kulli wasfin kamilin. That thana, that Allah is the possessor of thana, it is a description and it is a praise, a description and a praise of all perfect descriptions and attributes. So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we extol the fact that He's perfect in everything about Him, in the most perfect to, to the furthest extent of the meaning of the word perfection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that pertaining to his names, his attributes and everything about him subhanahu wa ta'ala. والمجد هو غاية الرفع And majd, it is the غاية of rifa. Majd, the word majd, when we say أحل الثناء والمجد 
Majd, it means that the furthest meaning and the most complete meaning in terms of having rifa. Rifa is being high in honor and high in esteem and high in position. Was sharf and honor. Okay? So for example, like you have kings of the earth, they are given high honor and high esteem and high position. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far and above beyond that. Whatever we imagine that a king deserves of terms of having high esteem, high position and complete servitude from those that he controls, then to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the majestic is more than that, above and beyond. Ahlul thana'i wal majd. And then the slave, he or she says, Ahaqqu ma qal al-abd. The slave says that this is the most truthful speech that a slave can ever say. Meaning that Allah deserves all of that amazing praise that we described and all of that amazing esteem and status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deserving of that. And it's the most truthful speech that a person can say, ma qal al-abd, and that is the reality. هَذَا min بَابِ taqrir. This is from بَابِ taqrir, meaning this is admittance from the soul. That the soul is recognizing and admitting and extolling and announcing that, oh Allah, what we're saying about you is not, we're not over-praising, rather we're under-praising. You are truly deserving of that and more. وَتَعْكِيدِ حَمْدِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَتَمْجِيدِهِ And a confirmation of the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His tamjid, His high honor, His high status, His high dominion and power. وَثَنَاءَ عَلَيْهِ And praising and extolling Allah's virtues. وَبَيَانَ أَنَّ هَذَا حَقٌّ وَاجِبْ لِصَاحِبِ الْإِزَّةِ وَالْجَلَالِ And clarifying with this statement, حَقُّ مَا قَالَ الْعَبْدِ When we say that, بَيَّانْ أَنَّ هَذَا حَقٌّ وَاجِبٌ That this is a obligation upon us to admit and to recognize that صَاحِبِ الْعِزَّةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the, the being who encompasses honor and might and all virtues similar to that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a right upon us that we recognize that and that we extol that and that we live according to those meanings. قَوْلُهُ وَكُلَّنَا لَكَ الْعَبْدِ Okay, so we say أَحَقُّ مَا قَالَ الْعَبْدِ It's the most truthful speech that a slave can say. And then we say وَكُلَّنَا لَكَ الْعَبْدِ SubhanAllah And we admit to Allah and we establish that our Allah, all of us in front of you are slaves and in servitude to you. اعتراف وإقرار بالعبودية Admittance and acknowledgement that we are in ubudiyah to Allah, in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what a blessed position that is if we find ourselves to be in servitude, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنَّ الْكُلَّ مَرْبُوبٌ لَهُ And everybody is under the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connected to whatever Allah has put in terms of systems of life and systems of governing the universe. مُسَخَّرًا بِتَسْخِيرِهِ مُدَبَّرًا مُدَبَّرٌ بِتَدْبِيرِهِ The same meanings. Like anything Allah has placed as terms of sunan, as place of ways of legislation of the laws of the universe, we are under the the control of those laws. We get up with the night and we, we, we sleep with the night, we get up during the day. When the sun comes out, we feel heat. When cold comes, we feel cold. Anything that Allah has put in terms of legislations and laws of the universe, we are under the submission of that. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna kullu man fis samawati wal ardi illa aati rahmani abda. That everything in the heavens and the earth on the day of judgment will come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in submission as a slave. Today in the world, people may claim that they're not slaves, that they don't have to believe in a creator, that they are existing of their own uh, abilities and they're surviving due to their own abilities and expertise, etc. And there's no need for them to believe in a creation. But the reality is that on the day of judgment, everybody will know for sure that they are in servitude to Allah Azza wa Jal. Whether it's servitude of love and admitting and being a worshipper of Allah, or whether it's servitude of humiliation that Allah will prove to you and show to you that He is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything that exists and that you should have been worshipping Him. So everybody is going to come to Allah Azza wa Jal as an abd. And some of the scholars, they said, قَالَ subki وَلَمْ يَقُلْ abid مَعَ أُودَ الدَّمِيرِ al الْجَمْعِ مَعَعَوْدَ الْدَمِيرِ al الْجَمْعِ That Subki, rahimullah, for example, he said, look at the verse, إِلَّا آتِي رَحْمَانِ عَبْدًا Except that every of one of the creation is going to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an abd, as a slave, in submission and in servitude and in humiliation in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So abd is for one person. So why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that everybody is going to come back as an abd and he didn't use the plural word which is abid. 
لأن القصد أن يكون الخلق أجمعون بمنزلة عبد واحد وقلب واحد because the reality is and the intent is that everybody on the day of judgment to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's as though it's one person there's no difficulty with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to all of the creation and judging all of the creation in the hereafter so don't let that come to your mind with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's as though he's speaking only to one person it's easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of no consequence that the creation will be in their trillions and trillions subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the slave the, the worshipper, they say in this beautiful dua, once they've come up from the ruku, they say, Allahumma la mani la ma atayt, wa la mu'ti li ma man'at. Oh Allah, there is none that can prevent what you have given, and there is none that can give what you have prevented, subhanAllah. So when the slave, he or she reads and ponders and worships with words like this, it gives the slave a huge amount of tranquility and hope and, you know, good thoughts. They don't go through life panicking. They don't go through life worrying about each situation because they know and they're positive that only that which Allah has written is going to be for them and that which was not written for them it will never come to them no matter how much they bang their heads against the wall no matter how sad they were to get so the believer doesn't behave like that rather the believer tries their best as much as they can to fulfill their needs and then relies upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that that which is written is going to happen nobody can prevent that for me and that which is not written for me, nobody can bring it to me. Like the Prophet ﷺ said in part of the hadith, مَا أَصَابَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُخْطِئُكَ وَمَا أَخْطَأَكَ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُصِيبَكَ That that which befell you and landed in front of you or touched you, it would never have missed you. And that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused not to touch you or to befall you would never, was never ever going to come to you. So in both cases, we rely and we trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It encourages us to be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It encourages us to have confidence and to try our best and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already written for us what we're going to have in this dunya. So why are we panicking over the future? We should be rather focusing on each moment that we have to make sure that it's productive, both in terms of this dunya and in terms of more so having a productive outcome in the hereafter. And the person says, وَلَا يَنْفَعْ ذَا الْجَدْ مِنْكَ الْجَدْ And, وَلَا يَنْفَعْ ذَا الْجَدْ مِنْكَ الْجَدْ So this is quite difficult to translate, but let's go for it. الْجَدْ بِفَتْحِ الْجِيمِ فِي اللغة بمعنى الحذ والسعادة So this word جَدْ, it has the meaning of حذ and سعادة. It could have the meaning of um, يعني your portion of the worldly, um, the worldly things that are given to people in this life. Okay, the worldly possessions and sa'adah and happiness. And it could also have the meaning of luck, but, but it truly means uh, more so, I think, the walhadh wa sa'adah, what you are given in terms of your, your worldly provisions and your happiness. What it means is that your wealth and your richness is in of itself not going to benefit you. وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكَ مِنْ حُذُوذِ الدُّنْيَا And other than that from the luck and the provisions and the material provisions of this world. وَإِنَّمَا النَّافِعَ هُوَ التَّقَرُّبْ إِلَى اللَّهِ But rather that which is beneficial for you is to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through worship. وَإِثَارُ طَعَاتِهِ وَمَضَّاتِهِ عَلَى كُلِّ الْمَحْذُوذِ And to prefer the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submission to Him above and beyond any worldly possession. So this is the reality. That that which we have in terms of materialistic means materialistic things that we have they in of themselves will not give us happiness rather there has to be that foundation of happiness which is our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you have that foundation of happiness you're going to be happy and that which you are given in terms of materialistic provisions will only increase your happiness but if they decrease the materialistic provisions you always have that happiness which increases due to your act of worships and your submission and your seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is a true thing that gives us contentment and true fulfillment is that you are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have a, um, a a bedrock of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have strong foundations of knowing Allah azza wa jal and being and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that increases the more effort you put that brings you more happiness and the materialistic things that you receive which are on top of that they will give you some happiness but the true fulfillment is what comes from that worship that you have established as a foundation for you in life.
And that's why we see some people in life, they don't have much in terms of materialistic possessions, but they have the greatest smiles and they have the biggest smiles. Why? Because they have a true foundation, a true connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have their worship and they chase their worship and they find more pleasure in their worship and seeking knowledge and doing service for the Muslims and Islam. They find true pleasure in that above and beyond the materialistic possessions that other people may have. And that's a reality that nobody will find pleasure in this world like they will find the pleasure in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in a true manner. And we ask Allah to gift us that. As many of the, uh, the, the people would say, the Salaf, the righteous, they will say, لَوْ يَعْلَمُوا أَبْنَاءَ الْمَلُوكِ مَا, ما نَجِدُوا فِي سَعَادَةً مَا نَجِدُوا مِنَ سَعَادَةً لَا جَالَدُونَ عَلَيْهَا بِسُيُوفِهِمْ That had the sons, the princes of the kings known what we are experiencing in terms of sweetness and happiness and enjoyment through the worship that we do to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would have taken out their swords to try to extract that from us with their swords by force. But it's not gotten like that, right? It's gotten by being in servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by making effort in pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and submitting to Him. That is where the true happiness comes from. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I hope there was some clarity to this beautiful dua. If there was, then that was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If there were mistakes and any shortcomings, then that was from myself and shaitan. Inshallah, we will see you in the next dua, the next session, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.